All right, so you're new to hiking and you want a little extra boost to get you going faster or, you know, help because your fitness isn't there or else you're trying to get your knees to be less angry after a hike. Trekking poles are a great tool for that. Um, and there are a few tips to use them more effectively and also um, to buy the right ones for you. So um, first of all, on the construction, there's a lot of different styles. Um, generally, the poles are made up of either aluminum or carbon fiber. And really that just impacts the, the weight of them and then the resilience to breaking as well as the vibration that they pass up and down. And so um, carbon fiber is usually more expensive. And then when it comes to the grips, they're generally either foam like this, which is nice because it's really nice and warm and it also manages moisture decent, doesn't give you blisters. Then there's cork, a lot of people prefer that. And those are nice because it manages moisture really well, stays grippy when it's wet. Um, and those are great for hiking. Downside to those though, if you lay them down and leave them at your camp and there's rodents around, they love to chew down cork handles. Um, and then there's also uh, faux cork or just fake cork. Um, and then there's rubber handles. And those are generally for like ski poles, anytime you're wearing a glove. If you don't have a glove on, you'll get pretty good blisters from that. So there's that and then as far as like the baskets and the tips, um, this is the basket right here. Most of them are removable and the bigger they are, the better they do in softer terrain. So if you're in snow, you're going to want a nice big snow basket for snowshoeing or um, skiing, whatever it is. And then the tips, most of them have come with a carbide tip. Some come with a little uh, rubber cap on them or like a rubber roller. And those are pretty much for like, you know, walking around a neighborhood if you're on concrete or asphalt, so it's not so jarring. But otherwise, these are usually preferable and you can replace these tips on most poles. You can buy new ones and heat them up, take them off, replace them after, but they last like, you know, I don't know, 500,000 miles. Um, and then the, the way that they assemble are, is also different. Um, most of them telescope, so they just slide in and out. Um, some of them break apart like this one does. And that's with like a little shared cable inside. And then you just, you know, bunch them up and, and strap them together. They're really nice and light. And these ones are really quick to deploy. You just grab that and it's set to go. And with all of them, or most of them actually, you can adjust the height as well. And to get the height correct, generally speaking, you just want to have your forearm level to the ground when your arm is by your side or else look for a 90 degree angle at your elbow. So say about right there and then you just lock them down. And the only time that you really need to adjust that is, um, and you can actually see where you're at. So for me, I'm about 120 ish um, centimeters. And the only time that you really need to adjust that is going up or down steep hills. So if you're going up, sometimes it's nice to shorten them a little bit. And that way, when you're you know, reaching out in front of you to, to, you know, lean in. Your hands aren't up here and it's really weird leverage. This is a lot easier so you can lean in. And then vice versa, when you're going downhill, when it's nice and long, you can reach out in front of you and kind of catch the ground earlier and use it to slow your roll. And that's the big kicker with, um, when it comes to saving your knees, the impact on the way down, especially if you have a backpack on, um, the jar on your knees will really blow your knees up quick. And so these are huge knee savers. And that's probably one of my biggest um, reasons why I like to use them. And then when it comes to using the straps, most of them come with straps on them. Uh, the normal way to use pole straps like on skis is to go down and grab your pole. But with these poles, if you fall, it can be problematic. Some people have broken fingers and stuff because their hands, you know, get wrapped like that. They go to reach out and the straps twist their hand all weird and break their fingers. So the correct way that is recommended is to come up through and then pin the strap between your hand and the pole like that. And that's so that if you fall, your hand could come out like that to catch yourself. And then also it's nice because it becomes like a little sling for your hand waiting off your wrist. So you don't have to grab the pole as tight and you can kind of swing the pole out in front and load it without having to grip it like that, which sometimes if it's at a sharp angle, it can be really awkward. So you can kind of let your hand flow into it like that. So that's really nice. And then the last thing that I, um, really like about having trekking poles is that you can use them as like feeler sticks. So we come out here to see the scenery or if you're a bird watcher, you're looking for birds or, you know, hunting, whatever. And when you're hiking on any terrain or you're new to a place, you're, you spend half your time just staring at the ground in front of you, trying to pick where your feet are going to go because you're, you know, have to keep look out for logs and whatnot. But uh, with these, once you get comfortable, you can actually kind of swing them ahead of you to kind of lead and feel for things. And over time, it actually becomes very natural, you know, especially on just like your average trail where, you know, you can feel the logs or if the trail dips down a little bit, instead of like, you know, missing that last step feeling, you can kind of anticipate it and then, you know, know that the trail is going up or down. So then you can keep your eyes up and enjoy the scenery or find, yeah, whatever animals you're looking for. So that's that. Trekking pool 101. Save your knees, hike faster.
Hope that was helpful. And I will throw some links down in the um, description to different options that I would recommend. And if you guys want to learn anything more about hiking, car camping, stuff like that, check out my website, roadtoridge.com. And uh, yeah, go explore around. Thanks for watching.